Hi everybody and welcome back to Sunday Open Studio. My name is Anna Maria and today we're going to be making paper bag kites. The type of kite we're going to make is called a sled kite. You can see a little one here. It's called a sled kite because the ribs of the kite look like the runners of a sled. Paper bag kites are pretty easy to make. All you need is paper bag. This is made out of a lunch bag. But you can also make bigger kites that fly a bit higher with brown grocery store bags. The ones with the flat bottoms like this. You'll need to have some scissors, a hole punch, pen or a pencil, masking tape, some string, and toilet paper tube or dowel to wind your string on for flying your kite. The type of string I use is common cotton twine, not very heavy. The lighter your string, the easier it is for the kite to get some lift up in the air. But of course, if the string is too thin, it could break in a strong wind. So it's a fine balance, but I find this normal butcher's twine tends to be the easiest one to use for my kites. Fishing line could also work as long as the knots don't slip. So I'll be demonstrating how to make a kite on the lunch bag because it fits better onto my camera screen but all the steps are exactly the same for the large grocery store bag. First thing we need to do is get our bag and cut off the bottom of the bag. I find the easiest way to cut off the bottom is to cut up the middle and for that I like to cut up on the side that has the seam for the lunch bag or for the grocery store bag. If I fold it in half and do a little crease at the opening of the bag it's easier to find the middle that way. And then I can take my pen and draw a line from the opening of the bag all the way to the bottom of that bag. Open up my bag. Sometimes the bottom stick. This would be one of those times. Carefully open it up. Okay, and then cutting through one layer only. I will cut along that line down to the bottom of my bag. And then I carefully cut around the bottom of the bag and cut it right off. bottom of the bag has been cut off. Now let me find my way here. Okay, so there you can see with the folds of the bag, we already have that sled design happening. Let's fold those sled runners in. Let's close the bag up again and draw a few more lines. The lunch bag has a natural fold, and so does the grocery store bag, right about a third of the way down the length. You can see one, two, three. So I take that as a good point to make a dot on my center line, and I draw from that dot diagonally to each of the corners on the outside of the bag. So I'm drawing from the middle diagonally out to the outer corners. And then when I open up my bag again, I can cut along those lines and cut off the four triangles. If I 
fold the bag along all of its folds again. You can see there are my sleds. I have two little wings almost. And my kite is ready to be taped. So if I fold those runners, or in the case of the kite, these are now the ribs of the kite. If I fold those ribs towards the middle and I turn the whole kite over, just like that, I can tape along this fold here so that the runners won't open up later. I don't want them to open up, so I'm going to tape them closed. Nice big long piece of tape. And if my tape is too long, I can just bend it over the edge or cut it off to make it nice and neat. Let's do that on the other side. Prevent the other runner from opening up. The other rib, as I was saying, I should probably use proper kite terminology since I'm not working on a sled, I am working on a kite. So we want the other rib to stay as a rib and not open up and flap in the breeze as we try and fly our kite. And then I will also tape at the top and the bottom of the rib where it wants to make a little opening. And you'll notice if my tape sticks over, I can just trim it off. All right, we're almost done making our kite. It's pretty fast, isn't it? The next thing I want to do with our kite, we'll have strings attached here. So we need to put some reinforcement pieces of tape there so that strings don't rip out. And I do that from one side a piece of tape over that point. And again, I'm putting tape on the two parts where we're going to attach some string. part of the paper bag where we cut the triangles off. We made a big long triangle on the kite. And the tip of that triangle is getting tape. And with my hole punch then, I can punch a hole through that tape, not too close to the edge of the bag. See how I have it a little ways away from the edge and again because again too close to the edge and my string might rip out in a strong wind and I don't want that to happen one more thing to do with our sled kite before we decorate it or tie string on it is make a vent hole now sled kites will fly very well without tails on them, but you have to create a little hole down at the bottom part of the kite that helps to hold it in position when it's up in the air. And again, notice how the top of our paper bag has become the bottom of the kite. So 
on the end away from where our string will attach. You can draw a hole. It doesn't really matter what shape it is. And I draw it down towards the bottom. And I can gently fold my kite in half again. Make sure that the ribs and all the flaps are out of the way and cut out that hole. You can play around with the placement of the hole. I like to put mine on the bottom, but I have read that depending on where you place your hole on the kite, the kite will fly slightly differently in the air. So if you have a lot of lunch bags, make a few different kites and play around with that. At this point now, you can decorate your kite. This is a side that you're going to see because the strings will attach here and it will fly up in the air. So this would be a really good side to decorate. That being said, the birds might like to see your decorations on the other side. You could use markers or crayons or even paint to paint your kite. And once it's all finished and decorated, measure out string that is three times the length of your bag. So one, two, three. And tie that string to those triangles that you reinforced with tape and punch the holes in. This string is called the bridle of our kite. And we'll attach another piece of string to it for flying the kite. Now I don't use any fancy knots to attach my string to the kite. I just make sure that I tie three or four knots and that I tie them nice and tight. If I want to, I can trim off the end of my string. And then, if I just attached a piece of string to my bridle, it could slide back and forth and be all unbalanced. So what I like to do is match up my holes and my points where the string is attached. And that way I can find the middle of my bridle. And I'm just going to do a little overhand knot, bringing my string under and through the loop and tie it so I have a loop in the middle of my bridle. And that is where I can attach my string. To fly my kite, I like to wind a lot of string onto a toilet paper tube. I think I wound my string around here about 75 times. But at the very beginning, I punched a hole in my tube and tied the end of the string to that hole. So just in case my kite goes up really high, I don't lose it because the string ran away on me. As long as I'm holding on to the toilet paper tube, I can't lose my kite. All you need to do now is tie the other end, the free end of your wound up string to that loop you made on the bridle of the kite. And again, if you have a fancy knot that you know how to use, go ahead. I just go with very simple tie my shoes kind of knots. And rather than a bow, I just keep doing that first knot three or four times. So 
So there we go. My kite is ready to fly. Like I said, if you put the vent hole in the bottom of the kite, you won't need to have any tails on it. It flies with just a little bit of breeze. Sometimes you have to run to get it started or have somebody hold this end up while you pull that end and catch the breeze. It's a lot of fun though. I'll show you a couple of other kites that I made. None of them are decorated because I was just having fun making the kites, but you're welcome to decorate yours. Here's one where I put the vent hole at the top and I use some of my scrap paper to make a tail. Got a bit frustrated though because it kept tangling up on itself. So I prefer the vent hole in the bottom where I don't have to have a tail. And if you want to see what a bigger kite looks like out of a grocery store bag, let's see if I can get this one going. It is this big. And it goes up pretty high into the sky. This one was made quite a few years ago by one of my brothers who taught me how to make these kites. And we had good fun flying it. It now stays on my bookshelf, so I always have a pattern and I make new kites. Because as you can see, it's getting a little bit worn out. But I tried it yesterday and it flew just fine still. Have fun making your kites, everybody. And have fun flying them. See you next week.